Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz and today we're going to be discussing another used to be unidentified but now identified case. If you didn't if you missed last week's upload, we talked about the Marysville Landfill Doe. This, that case and this case kind of go hand in hand because we're talking about the same people that solved two different unidentifieds. So, that being said, let's get into today's true crime case, shall we? That is of Alice Lou Williams, a.k.a. the Beckler River Doe. So on June 16th of 2022, there was not one but two unidentified cases or doe cases that had been identified. The Marysville Landfill Doe, which I'll put in a card above, and the partial cranial remains of a human that was discovered in Skykomish, Washington, or like she would have been referred to as the Beckler River Doe. Now, these remains were identified as Alice Lou Williams. This was after Dr. Taylor, who I mentioned in my previous video, um, she was the same anthropologist that helped the identification of the Marysville Landfill Doe. She was able to determine that the cranium belonged to a person, that of female origin, and was over the age of 40. But the problem they had is that, obviously we figured out it's a woman, she's over the age of 40, but there's we couldn't figure out how she died. Now, her cause of death is actually classified. They have not released how she died if that just makes it even more strange. But we were able to determine that the act of death itself happened at least one year prior to discovery, but possibly as many as decades before discovery. So the whole the whole kind of thing is a little is a little strange. A little strange. And when I mean a little I mean a lot strange because I mean her cause of death is classified. We, we know that when, when the cranium was found, it was just part, like partial cranium, not even a full one. They couldn't even fully do a facial cre reconstruction because it was only parts of the cranium. Like not even a, not a full skull, just part. So you're thinking like, hmm, so weird. Now, it's cl her cause of death is classified because there's sus suspicious, I can't say that word. It's classified due to suspicious circumstances due to a presence of trauma in the location to where part of the cranium was discovered. So they're holding it classified because she was found in a river, like on a river bank, and also due to what they found, the presence of trauma on her skull. Now her case was added to NCIC and to NAMIS, just like the Marysville Landfill Doe. In March of 2010, a small part of the cranium was sent to Quantico. If you don't know what Quantico is, it's in Quantico, Virginia, and this is the FBI. Basically, it was sent to an FBI building for analysis um, and for DNA extraction, which was successful. They then added the DNA to CODIS. In July of 2012, the FBI were able to obtain an NT DNA profile and a complete STR profile. And both of these were then uploaded. There was no matches to the DNA, and unfortunately, she would continue to go unidentified. Now, in October of 2017, the Snohomish County Medical Examiner, which I spoke about in my previous video, and the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office cold case detective, Jim Scharf, then contacted the Doe Project. They also contacted Biotech in Georgia. They then attempted to perform DNA testing on the nucleic DNA that was extracted by the FBI, but due to negligence on the FBI's behalf, the DNA was heavily contaminated with non-human DNA, and testing was a complete fail. <sighs> Thank you so much. So, there was another attempt that was made in October of 2019 when they took a small portion of the cranial bone but this was unsuccessful in another extraction. And it was also recommended to not attempt another extraction. But investigators decided they needed to try at least one more time. One more time. And this happened in June of 2021, when Othram would be used this time. The investigators sent a section of the cranial bone to Othram and so that they could extract DNA. This funding was also provided by AudioChuck Productions, just like that of the Marysville Landfill Doe. In March of 2022, Othram was successful in extracting DNA that was sufficient enough for testing. 
They then sent the DNA to genealogical websites and they started to build a family tree. As soon as they started, they obtained multiple close matches to this DNA profile. And they discovered that Alice Lou Williams fit the profile that they had. This woman fit the profile and she was unaccounted for. She hadn't been seen in years. Alice's children were contacted and then they volunteered a DNA sample. Familial DNA was referenced and it was a match to that of the DNA profile that they had created from the cranial bone. Alice's family finally knew that she had passed away, but they didn't know exactly how because her cause of death was being withheld due to suspicious circumstances of her death. Alice Lou Williams disappeared from her Lake Loma cabin in July of 1981 under very like suspicious and mysterious circumstances. Nobody knows when, just the, they know it was in July of 1981, but they don't know how she went missing. They don't know like the exact day. And the question still remains, what happened to Alice Lou Williams? Like what exactly happened? All we know is that the Beckler River Jane Doe was finally identified. She finally would be able to be put to rest. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that on October 10th of, tw of 2009, her cranium, partial remains of her cranium was discovered in a steep forested ravine near the Beckler Road north of Skykomish, Washington. But yeah, what are your thoughts on her case? Her case really confuses me because you think you would want parts of what happened to her you, you think you would want people to know exactly how she died, that way they could build like a reference, unless her case is a part of something much bigger and we don't really, like, we don't really know. There's nothing really, like, determined from that, but what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you have to say, and I'll see you guys in another video.